Hello, I'm Joanna White and I'll be showing you the basics of how to use open source software raw cooked using the command line interface like Terminal in Mac or Linux, which I'm using here today, or PowerShell or Command Prompt in Windows. Many open source tools are installed and operated from the command line and for this you will need admin privileges. So before installing raw cooked, make sure you've installed the latest version of FFmpeg for your operating system. FFmpeg is a powerful open source command line based video and audio file processor used for transcoding, editing, scaling and post-production and with compliance to many established broadcast standards. It's used in many hundreds of software projects including YouTube and iTunes. Both softwares have downloadable builds from Microsoft Windows, Apple Mac and multiple Linux distribution packages. You can find this information from mediaarea.net forward slash raw cooked and from ffmpeg.org forward slash download dot html. To make the installation process easier, you can use package managers such as Chocolatey for Windows or Homebrew for Mac, Linux or Windows subsystems for Linux. These package managers automate safe installation upgrade and removal of packages in a consistent manner with your operating system. They do this by maintaining a database of software dependencies and version information to avoid software mismatches. Both Homebrew and Chocolatey can be used to safely install and upgrade your FFmpeg and raw cooked software and it's as easy as typing brew install raw cooked in Homebrew. Once you have both FFmpeg and raw cooked installed, you can begin easily converting image sequences into single stream video files. Let's take a look at some of the commands you can use to familiarize yourself with both installations. FFmpeg version or raw cooked version will show you which version of the software you have installed. FFmpeg help or raw cooked help will take you to the help pages which give you an overview of the software and how to use it. Man FFmpeg and Man Raw Cooked launch the Raw Cooked manual pages and the FFmpeg manual pages which again provide an insight into the software usage and a list of all available commands. You advance through the document until you've read all you need to and then exit the manual pages by pressing the letter Q. Now that you have everything installed, you can operate Raw Cooked using the default license right away, which allows for limited usage. To see exactly what the default license allows, use the command raw cooked dash dash show dash license, spelt with an S. If you have a license key already for Raw Cooked use, then you will need to update the software by storing the license key. To do this, type raw cooked dash dash store dash license followed by the value. Raw Cooked version 21.01 .01 introduced a new command, dash dash all. This command combines several important commands, ensuring the highest standard of image sequence encoding. It can be used to transcode an image sequence to FFV1 Matroska, and it can be used to return an FFV1 Matroska back to an image sequence. This command combines several others. This includes info, conch, coherency, hash, check and check padding, encode or decode. So let's just talk through these. Dash dash info provides basic information about the compressed Matroska, like the presence of hash in the raw data. Dash dash conch performs a conformance check of the supplied format, whether that be DPX, TIFF, WAV, FLAC or FFV1 Matroska. Coherency checks the coherency of the image sequence package. For example, it checks if a WAV file supplied is the same duration as the DPX sequence, checks for gaps in file image number sequences, and if a file already exists where your new Matroska might be situated. Dash dash hash. This very important action computes whole file CRC32 hashes for all audiovisual files in your image sequence folder. These hashes are then stored into the raw cooked reversibility data file and embedded in the Matroska wrapper where they are accessed during reversibility checks. Dash dash check. This action is used during encoding and decoding of files. It is responsible for checking the generated FFV1 Matroska file is fully reversible by decoding the Matroska 
in comparing the decoded DPX or TIFF hashes against those stored in the metadata during encoding. Decoding a Matroska without hash data embedded after a period of storage will not have this checksum validation feature because the original sequence isn't present, but it will still verify that the reversibility data is well formed and that all images, audio files and attachments are present. Dash dash check dash padding. This action is identical to the check action with the addition that it will inspect and compare the padded bit data stored during encoding into the raw cooked reversibility data, only to be used where non-zero padding bits are identified as it increases the time taken to analyse the reversibility of the Matroska. Dash dash encode or dash dash decode are automatically selected based on the file type passed to raw cooked software. If a folder full of DPXs or TIFFs is passed, or the first image file within that sequence, it will select ENCODE. If an FFV1 Matroska is passed to the command line, then DECODE is selected. So let's take a look at the encoding process using the ALL command. So for the sake of this demonstration, I've created an FFmpeg test source sequence. Um, the image sequence has 240 frames within it, which is about 10 seconds. It's three gigabytes total size, and we're gonna use this for our demonstration. It can take minutes or hours to encode an image sequence, depending upon the configuration of the system running the command and the scan size and frame length of a, of a film reel. The process begins by assessing each image file, counting through to 100% completion. At this point, the FFmpeg command is generated by raw cooked and the encoding begins. The next outputs we see are FFmpeg encoding. When these have completed, raw cooked runs its reversibility checks and again analyze the file counting up to 100% completion. When the encoding is complete, you will receive a message, reversibility was checked, comma, no issue detected. However, if the software did encounter a problem with the image sequence, such as trying to encode a format that you do not have a license for or a malformed image within the sequence, then you will either receive the message before the FFmpeg encoding begins or at the end of the reversibility checks. These error and warning messages always provide an explanation about the issue to help you resolve it. Now we have an FFv1 Matroska file. Let's take a look at it using Media Areas Media Info software and view it with MPV player software. You can also use VLC or FFmpeg's FFplay for viewing these files. The FFV1 Matroska is lossless and only 22 megabytes in size, when the original film scan folder was 3 gigabytes. This isn't quite the rate of reduction you would find with normal film images. The resultant FFV1 Matroska is usually one third to two thirds smaller than the film scans, quite often about half the size. So let's decode this Matroska now and run a difference check between the two sequences. We'll type raw cooked dash dash all, and this time give the Matroska path. If you remember, the software will automatically select the decode for an FFV1 Matroska file. So in a similar way to the encoding, it begins with what looks like its analysis, counting up to 100%. This is actually the decoding process. So the sharp-eyed amongst you will have seen the attachment in the Matroska file earlier that said raw cooked reversibility data. It uses that raw cook reversibility data to unpack the DPX files. FFmpeg isn't used at all for the decoding. When it's completed and reached 100%, it will give you the information, info reversibility data was created and the version of raw cooked, and it gives you the location of the new decoded DPX folder. And again, reversibility was checked, no issue detected. So let's quickly run a diff check to make sure that both the DPX sequence folders are the same contents in them. So that's diff minus s, and then drag and drop the two different folders. And that will just run through both sets of files within the folders and check that they're identical. For a more detailed analysis, you can use MD5 checksums. You can also use FFmpeg's FrameMD5 feature, which will create a FrameMD5 manifest of the DPX sequence with the flag dash dash FrameMD5. You can also use the FrameMD5 to validate the DPX sequence against the Matroska file by generating a manifestation of both items and again running a diff check against the two. So that concludes the demonstration. I hope you found it quite straightforward. 
It's great software and it really saves so much space. And the best thing about it is those files are viewable. Don't forget to take a look at the other commands Raw Cooked provides in their help pages. And now you have FFmpeg installed, you should really look at their website and realize all the wonderful potential open to you. Why not take a look at AMIA open source website FF Improviser, which provides FFmpeg commands for audio, visual, and archive use. It includes FrameMD5 generation. Thanks very much.